The heart of a poem often is a riddle. Not always, but some sort of riddle. Um, and they make you look at the world differently. Because lots of people look at the world and go zoom, 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 zoom past. And you think what you see is what you see. But a poem is a way of saying, hold on, it might not be. And if you could just stop everything and tear the world like that and look inside, things might not seem to be what they are. And a poem was a way of doing that. And it always made me feel like I could escape somewhere. Being in Scotland feels like being at home and not being at home, like there are very definite distinctions. But there's a mood upon the, the landscape that feels the same. My surname is Cahoon. Uh, we grew up with my grandmother always reminding us that we were Cahoons and Scottish uh, on my Cahoon side showed us the tartan and told us about Lass and, and little bits and pieces of the family association, but much of it was shrouded in mystery. Uh, over the years we've sort of unpicked that. Um, and I thought I might, I, I would like to bring something back from the outer edges of the Commonwealth back to Scotland by finding some of those ancestors who were the missing links to write about and so uh, I tracked down those stories and wrote about uh, three ancestors uh, my great 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 grandmother her daughter um, and her son Henry Cliff Cahoon who came to New Zealand from Edinburgh and wrote about them but I also wanted in the poetry to be telling a story so rather than just writing about the characters I wanted to um, write in a style of poetry that honoured Scotland um, but also honoured my own country and, and that was easy to do in a sense because both countries have a strong tradition of the oral poem. Uh, this poem is called A Song for Mary. Uh, it's written for Mary Freer, my great 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 grandmother and uh, in some ways I never wrote this to be a poem, it's a, what I call a scaffold to write, a translation that would be sung in Māori, but this is sort of the exhaust of that poem in a sense, and it gives you a sense in English of the voice that's in the Māori poem, um, or the Māori sung version of the poem, um, which is a different voice from what appears in the, in the, the folk tradition, the song written in the folk tradition. A song for Mary. For Mary Freer, 1796 to 1872. The presence, the anguish. Hold one, I tremble. Hold one, I tremble. That we should meet here in this long, unravelling sigh. Beside me, is that one I call taken too soon, you will know her. And that one who slipped through your fingers, next to him, is that one called hidden in God. And his child, that one who curled my hair. From these have come four walls and a roof, my father, and this one singing here, your son. The rain falls over Purirua now, is taken by soil, by root, by branch, to fruit. I have swallowed earth and sky, it seems. I bring my child to you as well. I have no choice. She has withered me as I have withered you. Let us talk 
tonight, like those before. When dawn approaches, we will rise like mist above the ridgepole, attempt the tops of trees, the altitude of birds, my heart a cup filled fit to burst. Nowadays, I feel like I'm always writing, um, even when I'm not writing, that the writing process is not so much about the writing, although that's important, but it's about observation and an attitude. Um, in the same way that a photographer has a power of observation and attitude and is always watching. It's a sense of tick, 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 tick. And I think, and maybe because I'm just getting old and grey, that it's actually the conversation that someone has with themselves over time. That's where the real poems come out of. And they just fruit every year from that branch. And it's keeping that conversation going. That is really what the right drives the writing. So it, the internal conversation or conversation with other people, reading other works, being influenced by anything. So whatever you're doing, and in my day job I'm a doctor, I'm gathering people's stories, language, character, personality. Um, hello, we're some pupils from, from Yale and um, we're interviewing Glenn, who is a poet from New Zealand. Um, how long did it take you to learn Māori? Well, there was an old woman who lived next door to me and I would go and visit her and she would help teach me Māori and I had a textbook and I would work my way through the textbook and then go listen to her. Um, and by the end of the year I was just starting to ha be able to hang into a conversation. Um, but I wish I knew more. I can sort of get by with 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 some simple stuff, but if people don't want me to really know what they're saying, they just speed up. Yeah? They get faster and I can't quite keep up with them. What is connection? Um, and what is this thing called intimacy? And and this there's a point between two people that becomes extraordinarily powerful. There's an energy that arcs between people when they're, when they're intimate, when they're close. And not intimacy in terms of love or that sort of connection, just the intimacy of the human, of being a human being with a beginning and an end. Um, and listening to each other's stories and hopes and dreams and fears. And that fundamental paradox that everything in you is in me. So that it's those conversations. What is the lightest possible touch upon another human being? How do we know we have touched? Uh, this song uh, is called Amor Tia Tia. Amor Tia Tia in Māori um, uh, refers to a, a body of chanted songs or histories. Um, the word itself comes from mortia, which is to long. Uh, and I, I like that name for a body of poetry, the longings, literally the longings. Um, and this is written uh, for Mary Freya, my great, 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 great grandmother. He mortia tia kia mere. E qui tau kiri e au e au e e qui tau kiri e kua tu taki tau ai te nei hau tangi. Tu taki tawa i te nei hau tangi anei ko te ngaro 
Arara ko te tūna, nā nā nei ko te takai a puta mai, ko te whiri puta mai, ko ngā pātū, nā nā ko au, tōta mai tī, nā nā ko au.